Tantra Illuminated with Dr. Christopher Wallace is a journey through the depths of the human experience. As viewed through the lens of the tradition called Non-Dual Shaiva Tantra. This multi-format podcast delves into the fascinating world of classical Tantra and its intersections with philosophy, neuroscience, psychology, human development, and the broader world of spirituality. This episode is a scriptural reading. Abhinava Gupta's Tantra Sara, which means the essence of Tantra or the essence of the Tantras, that is the Tantric scriptures, is an incredible, powerful work composed about the year 1015 in our calendar. It might be the most impactful single work of Tantric philosophy and practice from the peak period of its flourishing about a thousand years ago. I've been working with this text for about 18 years off and on, and I finally reached a translation that I'm satisfied with, and I'm so happy to share it with you. After completing his monumental Tantra Loka, Light on Tantra or Light on the Tantras, Abhinava Gupta discovered that his encyclopedia of tantric philosophy and practice was simply too vast, detailed, and complex for most of his students. And so, in response to their entreaties, he composed the Tantra Sara as a kind of summary of the Tantra Loka, which by comparison with that earlier work is powerfully focused and laser sharp giving, as promised, the real pith and marrow, sada, of Abhinava Gupta's thought and tantric wisdom and scripturally derived insights. I'll be presenting five or six chapters of this text over this series of scriptural readings. And these are passages that can be listened to again and again. Each word is chosen so carefully and precisely by the great master. I hope you contemplate and meditate on these incredible pointers to the nature of reality and consciousness and human experience in its deepest possible dimension from that great Mahasiddha, Abhinava Gupta, perhaps the greatest of all Tantric Masters. And without further ado, I bring you the Tantrasara, Introduction and First Teaching. The Essence of Tantra by Abhinava Gupta. The First Day. Many are unable to plunge into the vast Tantra Loka, light on Tantra. Therefore, may all listen to this work, the essence of Tantra, composed in straightforward language. As an act of revering the divine, may all contemplate this lotus of the heart of Abhinava Gupta, its blossom opened by the light falling from the rays of the sun, that is to say, its contraction has been forever banished by the wisdom descending from the feet of the Illuminator, my Guru Shambhunatha. Alternate translation of that last verse. As a lotus closed in the night is unlocked by the light as the rays of the sun fall upon it, so the heart of my awareness was freed of its contraction by the power of my Guru Shambhunatha. 
now I reveal it. If you would worship the Supreme Lord, you have only to know its nature as your own. According to our view, insight is the one and only cause of spiritual liberation because only insight antidotes ignorance which is the one and only cause of bondage. Now there are two kinds of ignorance which we call mental and personal. The first mental ignorance is of two types essentially lack of understanding and wrong understanding. The second, personal ignorance, is simply the ignorance implicit in the sense of separate individuality. It is the contracted manifestation of awareness that is the basis for the formation of all distorted mental constructs. That alone is the root cause of the cycle of suffering. Of these two, personal ignorance can be removed by tantric initiation and the spiritual practice that initiation makes possible. However, initiation itself is not possible when mental ignorance, characterized by a lack of that discernment derived from diligent effort, continues to exist. This is because initiation, which consists of purification of the tattvas and unification of the soul with Shiva, necessarily has as its prerequisite a clear understanding of what ought to be abandoned and what ought to be cultivated. Thus, it is specifically insight on the level of the mind, consisting of discernment derived from diligent effort, that is most important initially. If that very insight is repeatedly cultivated, it eradicates personal ignorance as well, because the regular practice of conceptual awareness culminates in the end in non-conceptual direct experience. The insight that most ought to be cultivated is the right understanding that pertains to everything in every way. That is, that which is true in all times, places, and circumstances. And here is such an insight. One's real nature is in truth divine. Atma is Shiva Swabhava, which means that one's real nature is the light of consciousness, uncontracted by differential awareness. This insight is based on scripture and only the Shaiva scriptures are a completely reliable means of knowledge precisely because they accept with discernment the defensible doctrines taught in other bodies of scripture and because they explicate a view of reality that is more all-encompassing than that taught in those doctrines a view that furthermore is established through reason as well. Thus the wisdom taught in other systems scriptures liberates one from bondage, but only to a certain extent, not from all of it. By contrast, the Shaiva scriptures do liberate one from all bondage. 
this scriptural canon consists of five streams, traditionally divided into ten Shiva Agamas, eighteen Rudra Agamas, and sixty-four Bhairava Tantras. The scriptures of the Trika are the essence of all of these, and the latter triumph of the garlanded goddess, the Malini Vijayotara Tantra is the essence of all the scriptures of the Trika. The teaching contained in that scripture can be grasped once it is accurately summarized. For one who has failed to grasp the true nature of things, there is no possibility of liberation, nor of liberating others, since those possibilities belong only to one with well-cultivated and well-practiced insight. Because well-cultivated and well-practiced insight is the root cause of the highest goal of human life, this work, the essence of Tantra, is undertaken to aid in its attainment. Summary verse for the introduction. It is traditionally said that ignorance is the cause of bondage. It is taught under the name impurity in scripture. When holistic insight arises, its power completely eradicates that ignorance. The consequent rise of the awareness of the self that is freed from even the illusion of impurity is liberation. Therefore, by means of that scripture, I will clarify the entire truth to be known by those who seek liberation. And here's that summary verse sung in Sanskrit language. Agnyanam kila bandha heturudita shastre malantat smritam purna gnana kalodayeta dakilam nirmulatangachati dwasta shesha malatma samvidudaye mokshashchate namuna Shastrena prakati karomi nikilam yajnyayatatvam bhavet. Chapter 1 continues. This section is called Illumination of the Modes of Realization On this path, the first thing to be grasped and understood is the nature of the goal. In our way, the ultimate goal is simply recognition of one's own fundamental nature. That is what is most worth seeking in this world. And that fundamental nature is the same in all beings and all conditions. It is simply the light of creation, because it is impossible that anything uncreated could be one's fundamental nature. And that light is one, not many. Its fundamental nature could not be divided since it is not possible for anything having a nature different from it to enter it. Not even time or place divide it, because both have that very light as their fundamental nature. Thus the light of creation is singular, and it is simply consciousness. 
for consciousness is the act of illuminating or manifesting whatever is perceived. All can agree on this point. And that light of consciousness is not dependent on anything else. For dependence is specifically the quality of needing to be illuminated or manifested. And that quality would demand the requirement of another light, another source of creation. And there is not any other light whatsoever. Thus, the light of consciousness is both singular and independent. Because of that very independence, it is free of divisions and limitations of place, time, and form. Therefore, it is all-pervasive, eternal, and retains its formless nature even while assuming all forms. Its independent freedom is its power of bliss, ananda shakti. Its relishing of that freedom is its power of will, icha shakti. The fact that it is the light of creation is its power of awareness, chit shakti. The fact that its nature is to reflect on itself is its power of knowing, jnana shakti. And the fact that it can assume any form is its power of acting, kriya shakti. Though conjoined thus with these principal powers in actuality, it is the unbounded light of consciousness reposing in its innate bliss, endowed with its powers of willing, knowing, and acting, that we call God, or Shiva. When Shiva that is, the light of consciousness itself, in his independent freedom, causes himself to appear in a contracted form. We call him the individual self. And through that same freedom, he again illuminates and manifests his real being so that his nature as Shiva, the unbounded light of consciousness, shines forth. When that occurs, he may illuminate his real being without needing any method to do so, or with such methods, again as an expression of his independent freedom. When this process unfolds with recourse to methods, all those methods may be subsumed within three categories, willing, knowing, or acting. Thus, three modes of immersion are taught. The divine mode, the empowered mode, and the embodied mode. Therefore, in this work, the four modes of realization, those three plus spontaneous realization, will be taught sequentially. Summary verse. The self is an embodiment of the light of consciousness. It is free and independent divinity made manifest. As an expression of the vigorous joy of the divine play of its freedom, the one conceals its own nature and also 
certainly reveals its innate fullness once again. That may occur spontaneously or through a process, and if the latter, in three modes. And here's the summary verse sung in the Sanskrit language. Atma prakasha vapuresha shiva svatantra svatantriya narma ravasena nijam swarupam sanchadya yat punarapi pratayeta purnam tachakrama krama vashadatava tribhedat And here is Abhinavagupta's simpler vernacular version of the same verse, written in a Prakrit language. The self is the light of consciousness made manifest. It freely conceals its own nature and manifests its fullness again immediately or gradually. From the highest perspective, all this is God's intense joy. Thus ends the first day's teaching in the essence of Tantra, composed by the revered Abhinavagupta. The first day's teaching consists of an introduction to the whole work, and then an initial teaching on the light of consciousness and the modes of realization. Here are some of the key points in the introduction. One, insight or realization is the sole cause of liberation. Two, the root cause of the cycle of suffering is ignorance, specifically the false sense that individuality constitutes separation, and the various mental constructs that arise from that false sense of separation. Three, Removing the fundamental ignorance is contingent on the cultivation of clear understanding or discernment regarding what is to be laid aside and what is to be held close. 4. The central insight to be cultivated by all is that one's innermost being is God, Shiva, the light of consciousness. That is to say, awareness, uncontracted and uncircumscribed by any kind of mental construct or dualistic perception. Five, the teachings of the Malini Vijayottara Tantra contain the essence of all the Shaiva scriptures and are conducive to liberation, and these are presented clearly here in the essence of Tantra. 6. Full awareness of the real self is liberation, or at least the first and most fundamental phase of liberated awareness, known as Arnava Samavesha. Key points in the second section of the chapter, called Illumination of the Modes of Realization, are as follows. The essence nature of all beings is the light of consciousness, one, indivisible, 
independent, unlimited, all-pervasive, eternal, and formless. Its fundamental powers or capacities are awareness, bliss, willing, knowing, and acting. Three, that light appears in a contracted form as the individual self, which is itself a means to know the true self. Four, the method of manifesting the unbounded light of consciousness in and through an individual being is that of actualizing the powers of willing, knowing, and acting as the three modes of immersion into reality as such. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Remember, you can always find out more about the tradition of non-dual Shaiva Tantra at tantrailluminated.org, where, if you wish, you can become a subscriber to our online learning portal, and you'll receive access to a vast number of recordings, including a comprehensive curriculum in tantric philosophy, tantric yoga, guided meditation, and much, much more. Music for the podcast, composed and recorded by Anne Leader. Find her at anneleader.com. Podcast produced by Grazia Tribulato. New episodes drop every week. And may all beings benefit.